Get ready for some spine-chilling revelations. In this video, we'll explore intriguing secrets, but here's the catch. You gotta know exactly what you're looking for because browsing is a no-no. With a whopping 52 miles of shelves, it's like a treasure trove of historical secrets. Hello curious birds, let's discuss creepy Vatican secrets that they don't want you to know. So grab your popcorn and get ready to uncover some fascinating stories from the past. Like this video and give your virtual encouragement by subscribing to Top 10 Cooler Stuff. Number 1. Regular Exercise or Modern Day Exorcism Fellow seekers of the unknown, you won't believe the devilish details I have for you today. Baudelaire once said, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist. In modern Vatican City, the devil is definitely on the radar. During his reign, Pope John Paul II personally performed three exorcisms, and Pope Benedict XVI expanded the ranks of Catholic-sponsored exorcists worldwide. Father Gabriel Amorth, the church's chief exorcist, claims to cast out more than 300 demons every year from his Vatican office. And get this, Italy alone has around 350 exorcists working for the Catholic Church. Amorth even teaches bishops how to distinguish between satanic possession and psychiatric illness. It's a captivating topic that keeps the devil's presence alive and kicking in Vatican City. Stay curious and keep exploring. Did you know that the devil is considered alive and well in Vatican City? We'll dive into the world of exorcisms, including the late Pope John Paul II performing three exorcisms during his reign. We'll also uncover the fascinating work of Father Gabriella Moth, the church's chief exorcist, who claims to expel over 300 demons a year. Number 2. Where Thieves Go to Pray Whoa, hold on to your holy water. Did you know that Vatican City has the highest crime rate in the world with 1.5 crimes per citizen? But fear not, it's not the cardinals going rogue. The massive crowds of tourists make it a pickpocket's paradise. Since Vatican City doesn't have a working prison, most criminals are handed over to Italy. The Vatican's legal code is based on Italy's with some modifications. They even have their own duty-free stores, and shoplifting there can lead to revocation of access. In 2007, they even had their first drug conviction. It's quite the intriguing mix of crime and punishment in the Vatican. Stay vigilant, my friend. Plus, what is a more unique situation is that the Vatican has no working prison and only one judge. Number 3. The Worst Confession So, the apostolic penitentiary is like the ultimate authority when it comes to forgiving some really serious sins. They've been around for centuries, but in 2009, they actually held a press conference to talk about their work. Can you believe it? They handle sins that are so extreme that even local bishops can't absolve them. Some of these sins are reserved for clergy, like breaking the seal of confession or offering confession to their own partners. But there are also sins that anyone can commit, like desecrating the Eucharist or attempting to assassinate the Pope. It's all super secretive. At the major penitentiary, Cardinal Manuel Montero de Castro makes the final decisions on how to deal with each case. Isn't it mind-blowing? Number 4. You can read the Pope's mail. Did you know that the Vatican's secret archives are not so secret anymore? Since 1881, scholars have been allowed to visit and examine the correspondences of every pope for the past 1,000 years. It's pretty amazing, right? But here's the catch. You can't just browse through the archives. You have to know exactly what you're looking for. With 52 miles of shelves, it's quite a task. One of the most famous letters in there is Henry Vlie's request for an annulment, which was denied by Pope Clement VI. That decision had a huge impact on history, leading to the break between Rome and the Church of England. The archives also hold some interesting red ribbons, which we used to bind petitions from English clergy and aristocrats. It's like a treasure trove of historical documents. Number 5. The Pope Liked to Text Message Did you know that Pope Benedict XVI was quite the tech-savvy Pope? During his time, he would send text messages of his homilies to mobile subscribers all over the world, how cool is that? The Vatican even opened an official YouTube channel to share papal addresses and ceremonies. They were really embracing the digital age. Not only that, but they also released an iPhone app with multilingual versions of the breviary prayer book and the prayers of daily mass. Talk about convenience. And here's something even more impressive. The Vatican added solar panels to the roof of the Pope Paul Vly Auditorium as part of their commitment to fighting climate change. They're using technology for a greener future. The Vatican's combination of faith and technology is truly remarkable. Number 6. The Vatican has the finest Swiss bodyguards. Did you know that back in the 1500s, 
the Swiss were known for their unstoppable military force. They were masters of the halberd, a deadly weapon that combined a spear and an axe. Their ground troops were so skilled that they could easily defeat enemy legions on horseback. Their reputation for military prowess was so impressive that Pope Julius I recruited some Swiss soldiers to become his personal bodyguards. These soldiers, known as the Swiss Guards, pledged their loyalty to the Pope and were willing to sacrifice their lives for him. During the sacking of Rome in 1527, three quarters of the Swiss Guards were killed while protecting Pope Clement VI as he escaped. Their bravery and dedication are truly awe-inspiring. Number 7. The Mafia dipped into the collection plate. It's quite an interesting topic, my friends. While The Godfather, Part II is a work of fiction, it draws inspiration from real-life events that add a layer of intrigue. The mysterious death of Pope John Paul I in 1978, just 33 days into his papacy, raised eyebrows. Officially attributed to a heart attack, the absence of an autopsy and the Vatican's alleged ties to organized crime fueled speculation. The subsequent scandals surrounding the Vatican Bank in the 1980s, including the resignation of Father Paul Marcinkus, the bank's president, further deepened the intrigue. Although Marcinkus was never indicted, suspicions lingered and he claimed diplomatic immunity before retiring to Arizona. It's a fascinating story that blurs the lines between fact and fiction, adding an extra layer of mystery to the world of the Godfather. Number 8. There's no Vice Pope The role of the Pope and what happens if they're unable to perform their duties. It's true that traditionally, once a Cardinal becomes the Pope, they're considered the leader of the Catholic Church for life. However, Pope Benedict XVI surprised everyone with his resignation, which was a rare occurrence that hadn't happened in over 500 years. In situations where a pope is alive but unable to fulfill their responsibilities, it can be a bit uncertain. While the cardinal can step in as the head of state for the Vatican, only the pope can carry out certain ceremonial duties. So sometimes masses and benedictions may go unperformed until the pope either recovers or passes away. It's definitely an intriguing aspect of the papacy that adds a layer of uncertainty. Number 9. Faith-Based Economics it's really cool to dive into the financial side of the Vatican. So, the Vatican needs a good chunk of money each year to keep things running smoothly. They have expenses like maintaining ancient cathedrals, funding the Pope's travels, and supporting schools, churches, and healthcare centers. To generate funds, Catholics contribute through tithes and donations, which amount to around $100 million annually. But that's not all. The Vatican also makes money from books, museums, stamps, and souvenir shops. They even have their own limited edition Vatican Euros. However, there have been times when they faced financial challenges, like in 2007 when they had a deficit of $13.5 million. Factors like the weakened American dollar and the performance of their newspaper, Lo Servitor Romano, played a role. To boost subscriptions, Pope Benedict made some changes, like adding more photos and covering world news stories alongside religious content. It's pretty interesting to see how they manage their finances. Number 10. Even the ATNs are in Latin Did you know that the Vatican Bank offers a unique feature? It's the only bank in the world that allows ATM users to select Latin as their language for transactions. How cool is that? This is just one symbol of the Holy See's unwavering dedication to the ancient language. Pope Benedict XVI was particularly passionate about reviving Latin and would often have informal conversations in this classical tongue. And it doesn't stop there. The Vatican's Latin Foundation is working hard to keep Latin relevant by translating modern phrases into this ancient language. In fact, they released an updated dictionary in 2003 that included terms like rush hour, tempus maxima frequenti, and dishwasher, escariorum lavatory. It's amazing to see how Latin continues to have a special place in the Vatican's traditions. Now, let's wrap up the video if you are really surprised by these weird creepy secrets like this video and share it with your history lover friend as well. Until next time.